Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, it is Friday. We have done five of these. If you would have told me on Monday that I was going to have a new series and five videos recorded, I would have said, get out of here. Who are you? But look, it happened. I came up with this harebrained idea and then followed through. It's incredible. No. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I really wasn't intending to do a Travis video. Uh, I happen to be going through, um, you know, one of my external hard drives, sort of fishing for files for this. Um, saw like an old folder and went in it and then uh, saw this and went, oh, you know what? This actually would be cool. There's some decent stories I can tell about the piece. And, um, you know, people love Travis, so it, it definitely won't hurt. So, yeah, so this is a Wizard Magazine cover. I actually don't know off the top of my head what Wizard Magazine cover it is. Uh, Travis did just only the pencils i inked the whole thing um wizard did not credit me on the cover i've talked about this briefly in other videos but there were like three covers for the book so one of them was someone uh, maybe joe casada and danny mickey those credits were correct there was another one um and uh then ours and uh yeah they omitted my name i want to even i don't remember but anyway was a little annoying to be honest it's like seriously like i can never catch a break with this stuff but anyway it's the only time i've ever done a wizard cover and uh it, it's cool somewhere i have a copy of the magazine so we've got spartan and grifter and uh this was maybe six weeks into inking travis maybe two months we've been working together for a little while i was starting to get comfortable this was actually a pretty big breakthrough piece for me. I actually thought it was probably like the best inks that I had done to him, done on him up to that point. Um, par partially the reason being is is that it didn't, when I was done, it didn't look like I had inked it. And that was actually uh, a positive thing for me. Um, so it sounds weird, but uh, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, Travis pencils, very tight um you know essentially if you just go over his pencils and try to ink them as is though it really doesn't work so there's a level of sort of um i don't even know what you call it like not refinement this stuff is very refined you really like there's a lot of nuance in his stuff and so the thing is is it's like microbi microbial nuance meaning that there are little tiny things that he does that stack up uh, patrons will understand what I'm talking about more, but I've, I've talked about that a piece of art has a, basically um, a constitution of good lines that it can accept and bad lines. And the more lines and choices that you make that don't make the piece look awesome, uh, it starts to look less than awesome. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where you know I see I see people that are aspiring inkers, and trust me, I've been there, so it's it's. I get it, and this isn't referring to Travis's stuff, but just in general, if you've only been inking a year or two, you really are not in a position to really be very subjective on how good your inks are. Um, and so what ends up happening is a lot of the nuance that someone who's been um, drawing for 10, 15 years, or even a shorter amount of time, but has achieved a high level of skill, they're gonna see things in your work that you're not gonna be able to see. And, and a lot of times it's flatness, it's a lack of understanding of form and really subtle things that um, start to work against you. You know, the thing is, is just as an example, is this, is this I don't know, I wanna see what, if this is an RGB file really quick. Anyway, um, so just as a for instance, if you took like an area like this, and well, we're gonna say that there's 600 lines in here okay if you start drifting on like two or three hundred lines and drifting what i mean is it's like there's a lot of form he's suggesting form he's suggesting little shadows he's suggesting things that are slightly in front of other things the more missteps that you make along the way on anyone's work whether it's you know ron Lim, mark silvestri you know your friend that you're inking his stuff or, or uh, you know anything um, the more wrong choices that you make, the, the 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 piece of art just starts to get less structurally sound. So it's a difficult thing because I I you know again doing patron pay, Patreon I'll I'll have people go like I've 
I've got this down. Like, I know how to do this. I'm, like, looking at this stuff, and, you know, sometimes in the back of my mind, I'm going, yeah, they can't really see what they're doing yet, which is normal. But so what happened for me is, although I, I don't think that I was able to see, as I'm referring to, uh, in some sort of brilliant, like, I've achieved the highest plane of um, enlightenment, things were starting to come together for me. So it was probably at a low level, but I was I was starting to feel for more. I was starting to understand overlap. I was starting to understand um, like little subtle things that are slightly in front of other things. And, and it started to make my stuff look better. And then over the last, you know, 10 or 15 years, I've refined it more, um, you know, and as I get better at penciling on my own, I'll be able to, you know, amplify that again. So, you know, inking is one part of the equation, but drawing it, um, you know, just becomes its own set of challenges, but it's doable. You know, it's definitely doable. It just takes time. You know, you have to be patient. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither was good drawing. So anyway, Grifter's jacket, it looks cool. His guns look cool. All the little gear and stuff like that. It's just fun and cool looking stuff. You should be hitting the like button right now. No, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, just generally speaking, believe it or not, mo we we did a lot of free-handed lines. You would be amazed at how much of the stuff is free-handed. I would say that these are not, but but past that, we really didn't use a lot of um, edges. It just didn't really work with his stuff. So what I found is. Um, it was better to just kind of hold on tight and kind of go for it. You know, if it was a curved line or a straight line, whatever it is, um, you just kind of went in and drew it and it definitely looked better. But look, I mean, I, I said in the video yesterday, it's funny that we're talking about like ruled lines, um, you know, use it as a, what would you call it? Like training wheels, you know, use it when you need it. Maybe sometimes, maybe you just use it for a little piece of a line, you know, use the ruler for this cause it's going to be real obvious and then see if you can freehand the rest of it. You know, things like that. Can you freehand circles? Can you freehand part of a circle? What I found is that there were no templates that would ever match up with this stuff that he drew because he didn't use templates. And so I was immediately forced to basically be able to freehand the stuff. Um, and in, in particular ellipses, um, was very very rare that he would use a would use a template for them and some I mean, you can see even with the gun this is all freehanded it's not it's not a template they're all a little wonky and a little off but it it kind of makes it work but you know it's just one of those things so you know beautiful design element to this piece i mean if you just look at it just as a piece from far away i think it it looks really nice it's got a warm quality to it the blacks are balanced um you know there's a nice hum of detail but it's not overwhelming detail uh and look this stuff was very very influential it look there's like a fire truck or something outside um yeah i made a joke the other day and said like you know was this stuff influential but it really was it it had a big impact on a lot of people and it still irks me a little bit to this day when people don't credit him um for for how much he affected certain people's art uh, it's, it's it's like you know he's your biggest influence it's very apparent to anyone looking at your work give the guy his due because it's like you know he deserves it. He really did some brilliant work. There was this period of time in particular where where no one really had done something as magical as he had, at least for a while. So it was pretty incredible. But all right, so yeah, that was one week of Beyond the Page. And I honestly, the to, to be honest, I didn't really want to focus on covers. It just sort of happened that way. But we will do a lot of interiors, so it'll be fun. Um, you know, whatever I can find, I'll, I'll kind of go over. But yeah, so this is the wizard cover. I'm sure you could Google Travis Charest, a wizard cover, and figure out which one it is. So anyway, all right, have a great day. I got to go see what all these fire engines are. It's definitely like right outside my house, so something's going on. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.